Hello everyone, I'm Tim from Toy Tinker Tim, and this is a character that needs little to no introduction. This is a 1983 version 1.5 Cobra Commander, and that is with the swivel arm design. There's so much that's already been said and done uh, about this figure, so that's not really the full purpose of this episode. I'm going to show you uh, the ways that I've taken to fix a less than perfect card back and make it visually more displayable and still making it work that can be removable if a future owner wants just the raw card uh, without any graphic addition or alteration. Also I'm creating a display case for the figure, the card back and his laser pistol. So this card back is in pretty good shape, uh, you know considering its age the intended lifespan of it, um, you know, the design which encouraged kids also to cut these up. Uh, not too often do you have a whole card back intact. They're going for the file card that you flip it over and cut it out on the dotted line. So it was almost intended that you destroyed these things. There's some slight edge wear over the whole sides of this card. Uh, there's some separating of the layers in the material of the card. Uh, there's a little bit of curving and some bends in there as well. Near the top by the hang tab slot there's a tear. Thankfully for one thing it is a clean tear. So overall about probably the bigger tasks but both neither one is that bad would be the tear in the large section of missing artwork where the uh, bubble was torn off um, that held the figure onto the card originally. Um, they're the biggest tasks, but both are very manageable and doable here. We're going to come out with a nice looking card. So for the warping of the card, I'll use the same process I've shown in other episodes here. Uh, dealing with toy packaging that suffered some wear and tear over the years. You know, the process that I've got there for that is using parchment paper as a protective top sheet and setting a um, clothes iron, you fill that up with some distilled water and uh, set to steam at about 300 degrees. I'll include some links here as well to episodes where I've done some extensive uh, packaging reconstruction, restoration. Um, they go through pretty heavily step by step the process that I've gone through ironing that out just a tip here to pass on. One thing I learned early on working on multiple projects is to just keep all the pieces bagged and grouped together. You know with the vintage toys if something small gets lost uh, it can be pretty much irreplaceable or you're going to probably end up finding one at great expense uh, on an auction through eBay. So going into the card back repair the first thing I'm going to do is begin with that tear. So I'm spraying some distilled water uh, into my palette here. I have some white glue, um, polyvinyl acetate, which is archival and it won't yellow. So polyvinyl acetate, just think of white glue, a, a white glue. Um, there's so many different brands and I don't want to get into branding on that. Just Google it, polyvinyl acetate, then you can make a choice on that, which brand you want to go with. The tear is at an angle um, through those layers of the card backer. Uh, it's actually an advantage uh, because being at the angle it's going to create a good bonding surface. There's more substance there to work with and um, 
it'll be very minimally visible when it's all mended together that way as well. So I'm using a nice soft number three round tip brush, um, wetting that in the water first, and then I'll work that into the white glue until I've kind of thinned that out a little bit here. Don't want it too thick and heavy. Uh, using the brush is going to keep that glue only uh, going into the areas that I'm wanting it to be applied to so I can just keep that as clean and neat as as possible. So sorry about the work getting out of camera view. Uh, at some point I'm hoping these episodes will pay enough uh, for themselves to get a better camera set up here. So after working the glue into that tear I'm burnishing the area down. Uh, which is also working in getting that glue mix through the different layers of the cardboard. I'm working the tool following the direction of that tear line to help blend those uh, stray paper fibers uh, down to the surface there. I can see on the front especially where the black printing is that has been uh, had some scuffing to it. So some of the black is gone. Uh, again, it's an easy touch up and I'll show you that uh, once this glue is dry. So I'm going to move in to clean uh, some dirt and scuffing that's collected around the tear with a kneaded eraser. So I'm checking on uh, some of the dings on the edges here uh, by burnishing them down. I may not need to glue all of the spots here, hopefully. After burnishing all the edges, I can see where there's heavy separation uh, between the layers of the card and uh, those spots that are going to require some gluing in there. So repeating the same steps of the distilled water and glue, a smaller brush this time, as I work the glue mix into the areas where there is separation. So after seeing that I've been able to get the majority of the spots on the edge of the cardstock glued, here I'm going to focus on cleaning a little bit more. What I'm starting with here in, uh, on the white areas again is with the kneaded eraser. So I like the kneaded eraser because it has some give to it uh, when you're pressing into the surface. That gummy nature uh, can help prevent damage a uh, conventional eraser like a plastic eraser could do um, having that softness to it there it uh, is just lessening um, potential wear on the paper so i think at this point i've gotten the visible scuffs in the white printing area cleaned up uh, and the edge areas. The tear area is fairly cleaned up as well. So I'm going to blend in some black uh, where the paper fibers have been worn away surrounding that tear edge. So what I'm using is this wax oil stick and I'm not applying the stick directly onto the artwork. Uh, because it would create uh, too harsh of a color on the surface there.
So I'm applying it directly onto a cotton swab and then I'll use that in turn to transfer the color onto the tear area for touch up. So after laying down that color then I can just flip the swab around and uh, to the other end here and blend, smooth out, uh, and work that color into the tear a little bit more thoroughly. I can also use this same process to touch up other color faded worn spots here on the card backing as well. There are some uh, edge wear scuffs here that I want to address with a plastic eraser. So I'm using a metal eraser shield. Uh, it's a great tool for that. It'll keep the pressure and uh, friction going there in more specific areas. So the design of this is, you know, there's various uh, die cut shapes out of this thin metal shield. So I can lay that over different areas on the artwork. Um, it'll protect the color print from being worn by the eraser while I work on these white areas. And, you know, another helpful thing is having the plastic eraser in this pencil type format uh, versus the traditional block looking eraser. Uh, you can work a little more easily and uh, even. Um, you can do it that way as well without an eraser shield. Uh, this is still going to help kind of concentrate where you're working at. Now it's time here I'm going to get into the process that I'm taking uh, for the card back missing print area. So I've started the process. Um, I've made a scan of the original card back here and imported that into Affinity Photo. So I'm using uh, layers uh, to recreate the color and text along with that little blue Hasbro logo and uh, I can isolate and print out the area that was torn off here that I'm recreating for the card. So if you're working with Photoshop um, you may want to take a look at Affinity Photo and Designer. Uh, the programs that you might find helpful you know, if you're working with images and design elements frequently. So what I've done here now, I've printed out my patch for the card back. Uh, it's all to scale, so I don't have to play with enlarging or reducing the image. I also made a faint cut line for myself to get the initial edge trimmed and uh, to begin lining it up. I'm also going to be making a few coats of a fixative spray on the paper printout. Uh, that's going to deepen the color and add just a bit of a sheen to it to help it blend in with the original card back. So after I've cut out my patch area, uh, I'm fraying the color edges near the type of uh, Cobra Commander and into that vintage blue Hasbro lo logo there. Uh, it's to help these areas visually blend in instead of a straight edge type of a cut there. Um, having this irregularity, it's just going to visually blend a little bit better. So even though I'm not spray mounting this paper patch on, um, that uneven frayed edge is still something I would do to just help camouflage the cutout area so it's not so visually distracting. So to attach this to the card back, I'm using what's just called adhesive dots. 
These are archival safe. Uh, they're strong enough to hold, but the big thing is it's reversible. So it can be taken off, removed in the future. You can find these kind of adhesive dots often in uh, scrapbook supply areas, in craft and hobby stores, and of course you can just Google it and buy them online as well. So now I've taken a number of these dots and applied them just scattered across the back of the patch area. And it's gentle enough in its adhesion that I can just slowly work it down into place. I can lift it and reattach it there. You know, when I'm using the spray adhesives, um, I've had situations where I had to line it up perfectly and put it down right on the first attempt. You know, there's no option to realign the artwork. That flexibility is another nice option using these dots on this kind of a project. So this card back will be going into a final display box, but I want an added element to keep the card flat and uh, some additional protection from light damage. So I'm using a six by nine top loader size sleeve. Uh, these are made of acrylic plastic and are archival safe. Uh, again, this not only protects the card, but is also going to help it display better. Uh, it's going to aid in making that patch area even less visibly noticeable. These uh, top loader type sleeves come in all different dimensions, and so it's something I would recommend getting some uh, for storing and protecting. Uh, papers, photos, items in your toy, vintage toy collections. So I'm going to go ahead and move on, on to uh, designing and setting up the display box build. So the goal of this case is to just keep it fairly simple in the appearance. Uh, so the view is focused on what's inside and not really paying that much attention to the case itself. So I'm going to be using uh, acrylic sheet, it's acrylic, uh, to build the display case. Um, what I've got here is 0.118 uh, inch thick material. Um, and unlike a graded action figure, uh, my point of this build is also that a person can take uh, the figure, accessories, etc. out uh, to be able to look at it, handle it, and then return it to the display to keep it safe. My design on this is essentially for it to be in two sections. Uh, the base section, where the items are being displayed, and a removable cover or top uh, to access the pieces then. So coming up with a way for these two to join but not be joined in a way that's uh, visually distracting will be a success point of this build. And then I'm also going to be using uh, clear acrylic rods to create a force fit uh, around the lid edges to hold the sections together. So my initial plan is to place the figure to the left of the card, uh, but as I lay them out side by side here, uh, I don't feel that's the best layout option because of the graphics of how your eye moves. So whether you're really aware of it or not, the, the artwork graphics here on the card back it leads your eye to the right, which is where the figure is placed on the card. So I feel placing the figure on the left is going to cause a visual conflict here. So I'm starting small, really small here, by first just crafting the base the figure is going to stand on. 
so it's not merely going to be attached to the bottom of the display case. I'm going to be using the plastic dowel here to support and hold the figure's feet on this base. Uh, the two black dots on the plastic are from where I've lined it up uh, on the figure's feet here to hold the bottoms uh, into these locations here, the spots. So I'm also going to be using that dowel material here in the figure's back. Uh, that's going to add just another location and form of support for the figure inside the case. After trimming this plastic out here, the, the edges are a bit sharp and uh, uneven. To get the uniformity on the edges, I'll be using a rough sandpaper first. So then to get a polished, more transparent edge here, I'm going to be using a combination of uh, 1500 and 3000 grit sandpaper along those edges. So to give you the dimensions on the acrylic sheet material, it is uh, 0.118, so 118 of an inch thick uh, material. The edges will still need to be sanded and uh, I've tried to keep as much of that protective plastic film layer on it and intact just to prevent surface scratches as I'm continuing to build and work on this. It's beginning to show here you can see I've done some sanding on the edges of this base already. Uh, it's bringing up the transparency nicely. Uh, I'll just polish a little bit more and I think we can call this piece good then. So my main pieces and sections are cut out now. I like the smaller piece. I try to keep the protective film on these sections in place. Uh, just to avoid the scratches during the working stage here. So now I'll be working over the edges on all of the sections here, uh, similar to the small base piece, sanding, uh, then with a coarse grit, uh, get that first down, and then to the finest grit sandpaper last. So yeah, there's initial design and planning uh, for this case, but just as I'm building with this figure, some of it is kind of improvised as I go along. Uh, one of these things is that I'm considering kind of a telescopic type of setup here with the uh, two types of uh, plastic tubing here to go into the screw hole here in the back of the figure uh, for that extra stability in the display case. And that would slide one over the other. Uh, one is a little tighter fit into the back of the figure. And then, of course, the plastic dowel. So it's just kind of one of these things where I'm going to try it and see how that goes. So the main adhesive that I'll be using throughout this uh, project here on the acrylic pieces is this Psy Grip number four. It's a fast set for acrylics. So I've used this solvent uh, cement before on other projects here and yes you do need a needle tip bottle to apply it. The label describes it uh, pretty well so saying it's water thin uh, but it flows much quicker than just water. So to apply it, you don't put it on the pieces and then press them together. You want to set up your pieces that you're gluing together in the position that you want them to be in first. Uh, then you run the applicator needle tip along those edges and pretty much instantly the sections are joined. It's really that fast.
So here's where I'm going to uh, attach the clear plastic dowel along the edges to create that force fit for the two halves of my display case. This clear dowel is uh, ideal material here for this application because it won't visually distract much uh, in the final presentation when you're looking at the case. Here's a look at how this is coming together. Uh, the card back inside its protective sleeve uh, will be attached by the adhesive dots to the display box uh, to keep the transparency intact. So laying the figure in by the card, I can see it's going to need a little something extra to boost it here to compete with this large dynamic graphic artwork here on the card back. So I'm going to elevate the figure so it's not just flat at the base here. And as an extra visual cue, uh, I'm going to dress up a platform uh, that I'm creating here with the Cobra insignia. And I've printed that on a frosted mylar material, sheet material, that's made for printers. And uh, it's got a nice sheen, good shiny look there to it so I think it turned out pretty good. So I'm, I've printed out some various sizes to kind of experiment with here. Um, it's just kind of on the fly kind of a thing. It wasn't part of my original design but I'm just kind of going with it here. And I'm going to be carefully burnishing it down to force a very tight fit. Uh, and that's in an effort to keep as much transparency as possible. Uh, because this is going to be viewed from the front and the back of the case. So I'm going to be using uh, double-sided tape to attach the Cobra logo uh, to this clear plexi base, the riser there. Because uh, I'm thinking with a spray adhesive, uh, it's probably going to cloud it up or give a yellowish tint. It's going to just kind of look funky or smeary. So I'm working this in pretty carefully and thoroughly. Um, trimming it down because like the rest of this display box here um, having some transparency and clarity to it is pretty key so I don't want to rush through this step even though it's kind of a small part in the overall thing uh, each part having it well executed is going to make the whole thing come off so much better Going back to that figure stand, um, I've trimmed and glued the polystyrene dowel here. 
and that is going to align with the holes in the bottom of the feet there. And so now I've gotten the uh, base for the figure here glued to that platform piece with the Cobra logo. Now because there is a tight fit, uh, I'm going to be rounding the corners where it bumps up next to the card back. I'm using a circle template here to just kind of help guide me as I go about to round the corners here to make them a little more even. Uh, I could round only the one corner that's going up next to the card back, but I'm opting to give it more of a uniform look to get both sides of it rounded off there. And the rounding, it's such a gradual curve there to it. I'm just going to be doing that just through the sandpaper. Um, not actually cutting anything there with a the knife. It's just sanding it down to get to the curve. So applying those adhesive dots here to the card back, uh, the sleeve opening uh, is facing up to the top on the card back so if you wanted to take the card back out of the sleeve you could and the sleeve would still stay attached to the display case that way. So these dots do a nice job of holding the card in place and uh, they also avoid becoming a visual distraction. So when you're looking at the back here just check out the back of the card. Uh, they're not really standing out to you. Um, they're not a distraction. So what I'm doing here is I'm using uh, some of the kneaded eraser to hold the figure base still while I'm gluing it. And it's also acting as a spacer uh, to hold it away from the back of the case so everything is secure when I go to apply that glue. So like I've mentioned before, when that glue goes on, it's an instant set. So I need to get this awkward spot here set right because you only get it on one shot to get it. So I've created a little force fit section here, this panel, um, using some of the plastic dowel and the other sheet uh, acrylic there that I have to hold the laser pistol here in the display. So the pistol display rack will also be attached with the glue dots instead of just gluing it flat.
So we've got it pretty much all together here. Um, just taking some of the detailed looks at the individual parts here. Um, the individual that make the whole. And I think it turned out pretty well. This case has a lot of details built into it. Uh, but it, it keeps your attention instead on what's inside instead of um, how this thing is put together or all the little bits and bobbles there. It's meant to keep your focus on the vintage toy. And for me, this process is having a sturdy display that's protecting the figure, card, accessories here. Um, but it's still being able to be handled and looked at. Um, to me, that's, that's a huge accomplishment here now. This is one of those projects where I keep building and tweaking it and then it's just like all of a sudden it's just done. So hopefully with this video you'll pick up some tips or ideas for whatever case or figure uh, that you may be thinking about building for. Uh, it gives you some things to think about in planning it out and uh, also some good ideas for potential materials you may want to be picking up to build it with. So don't forget to subscribe here to uh, Toy Tinker Tim to the channel. Uh, share the episode on your social media with friends and collectors. And again, as always, thanks for watching.